Welcome to the first in a series of Facebook Live advice sessions hosted by Attitude. Uh, this new endeavor is part of Attitude's ongoing efforts to support readers during the pandemic. For more resources, please visit attitudemag.com forward slash tag forward slash coronavirus. Though today's session is limited to no more than 15 minutes, we invite you to submit your questions on the topic of motivation in the comments field below, and I'll aim to answer one or two at the end. So I'm going to start with the first question that Attitude submitted to me in advance. And this is for a parent, uh, this is from a parent of an elementary school age child. I struggle to motivate my seven-year-old. I can be mom, but how do I balance mom and teacher? I sit with her off and on for nine hours to get three hours of work done. She is seven. I have another child and spouse, meals to cook, laundry, an apartment to clean, and groceries I, that I also need to focus on. Uh, we can't figure out how to create incentives or consequences that will support her in learning, contributing reasonably in the home, and encouraging kind and appropriate behavior. So this is uh, an issue that I hear from many parents of kids who are in elementary school, which is number one, how do I become my child's teacher and simultaneously be a parent? Because I never really signed up to be a homeschooling teacher. It's not really my forte. And on top of that, I'm not particularly skilled at dealing with some of the le specific learning challenges related to teaching a child with ADHD, or if you have a child who has ADHD, ADHD and uh, learning disability that's such as uh, dyslexia or dyscalculia or written expression or uh, who is on the autism spectrum, you're probably pretty stumped and you're not alone. Um, I think that what, we, what, what you want to do for these kids uh, is really decide what's the most important thing we want to work on for school. And I would encourage you to speak to your child's teacher about this. What are the goals that we want to accomplish during this uh, COVID-19 homeschooling period? And we probably are going to have to simplify them from the kinds of goals that uh, were, were existed when the, your child went into a classroom. Um, spending nine hours a day to get three hours of work done seems unfair to you and unfair to your child. You know, kids who are in elementary school with ADHD have limited um, attention spans. In fact, all kids have a limited attention have limited attention spans. We want to try to figure out what engage what is your child's limit what is your child's uh, attention span and what engages them in learning and where they need a break, how long they need a break what kind of break? Can they do any work on their own? And if not, what is reasonable for you to expect yourself to do with your child and what the school expects? You know, a seven-year-old is struggling. They're, they may, you know, say they understand what this, what's going on, but in reality, their, their understanding of COVID-19 is it and they're stressed. Um, they, they miss their friends. They miss the routine. Um, they're out of sorts. And so having to do three hours of, of work is a lot for a seven-year-old uh, um, during this time. So I would encourage you to speak with your teacher, the teacher about how to cut that back and how to make that work more engaging. A lot of elementary school kids can't um, participate in full classroom activities when they have ADHD. They do better in smaller group activities. Um, they may need to um, have more of a hands-on experience. If kids uh, struggle with um, listening um, with reading or doing math, they need help. They need to have those directions recorded or they need the math, to, they, they, they need the teacher maybe to video how to do some of that math. Help, the, help work with the teacher to try to figure out some experiential and activated learning tools that you can use at home. Incentives are really the best way to go. So what you want to do is give your child a certain amount of screen time that they get automatically every day, often at a time of the day that works for you. And then the rest of the screen time that's okay with you for them to have, they have to earn through their cooperation. And we want to try to make this a win-win situation rather than um, a win-lose situation. So try to set some goals for your child that they can actually achieve 
achieve so that they will earn some of that bonus screen time uh, rather than feel like they're never going to get uh, they're never going to get any of that. Um, I would encourage you to ask your child uh, what helps them calm down when they're distressed. And is it a hug? Is it hearing a story? Do they need to like pet the cat? We want to incorporate those types of breaks into their day and into um, the, uh, and, and connect them to the expectations uh, that we have for them. We want to keep the have tos in their lives relatively small and simple um, because remember that a, a seven year old with ADHD in many ways is more like a four or five year old in terms of the executive functioning skills that are needed to do work. And with all of the distractions at home, it's really hard on these limited executive functioning skills. So I'm going to go on to the next question, which is has to do with kids in middle school. Uh, again, if you have a question about your own situation, please feel free to submit it. So this is a, a parent who submitted the following question. My 12-year-old son has no drive or direction. The school gives him the bare minimum amount of work, and he's losing interest in whatever online classes he has already. How can I motivate him to stay positive and stick with distance learning? I've tried reward charts, Starbucks gift cards, and a prize bag. I'd also like to stop micromanaging his schedule and motivate him to engage in other interests on his own. Wow, that's a lot. So let's start with the lack of drive or direction. I would imagine that your 12-year-old son has drive or direction to do things that matter to him, whether that's gaming, a Google Hangout, or other types of social media or technology. He's motivated to do those things. What he's not motivated to do is boring schoolwork that A, is uninteresting, B, is unchallenging, and C, seems irrelevant. A lot of kids right now with ADHD, particularly middle schoolers, are struggling with what the point of it all is. Even high schoolers are, are, are coming to me and saying, I don't even know why it matters. I mean, I know why it matters, but I don't want to do it. So when there's a lack of, of, of desire to do something, there's less dopamine that's associated with it. And we know that dopamine is, is one of those neurotransmitters that helps us with interest and reward and motivation. And there's less dopamine in the ADHD brain already. So now something's not interesting it's not appealing. There's naturally less dopamine in a neurotypical brain and in an ADHD brain. I don't even know how to say this. It's like a double negative, right? So we have to motivate our kids with what interests them, the, the want tos, and attach those to the have tos. If he has the bare minimum amount of work, how can we get him to accomplish that bare minimum amount of work in time periods that make sense for him? Sit down with him and talk about how long can you focus before you need a break? What are we going to do during that 10 minutes of focus? How can we set you up for success? What's the strategy we're going to do? What, what are the tasks? A lot of kids in middle school know what they have to do, but they may not be able to prioritize it. They may not be able to um, apply themselves to the work, uh, particularly for any length of time. So expect that your child's attention span is going to be shorter right now. That is normal. What we will also what we also want to do is again, like we did with the elementary school age child, is link the have to to the want to. So give your child a baseline of what that free screen time is, where they can fool around, and then add the extra screen time, which is what they want. So let me be more specific. If you decide it's okay for your child to fool around on screen for three hours a day outside of school, which might be even low in a lot of families today, give them an hour and a half automatically, and then attach the rest of that time to small accomplishments that you set up together. Ask your child what he thinks he would like to do, how he can do it, what matters to him. We've got to get buy-in with these kids. And if, the, if the, the, the smaller the task, the better the chances that the child will be able to start it and make some progress on it. We're looking to reward efforting and encourage um, 
what we see kids trying to do, not so much the outcome. It's it, because what happens is they feel overwhelmed by whatever the task is because it seems so boring. It's like, you know, an, an enormous, it's like when we're faced with, you know, three, four, five loads of laundry, it's terrible. So we want to try to break it down into a, 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 na a, navig a piece that they can navigate. So break it down, offer a link between doing a small piece of work and earn time, bonus screen time in what they want and go back and forth that way until you can get as a little bit done. I think having expectations for him to engage in other non-screen activities right now might be a little bit unrealistic. Most of the kids I've talked to or I have contact with or um, have spoken to parents in webinars are depressed right now. They are very discouraged. In fact, my own daughter, who's 21 and is having to do distance learning, she's quite unhappy. She does not like doing this. She's an artist. Um, it's not inspiring to her. And so we need to take that into account uh, rather than expect them to do other things, um, maybe work with them on on having a realistic expectation. So perhaps getting them to read for 15 minutes a day as at during a family read time or bake for once a week. We're going to together work on making your favorite cookies or brownies, something that you're engaged with them so that they're not having to do it on their own. Now, some kids are interested. They want to learn how to make me play the guitar or they might figure out some some online piano lessons. That's great. And I think that might be the exception more than the rule right now. Kids are feeling defeated. And so we want to kind of honor that, listen, empathize. The next question comes from a parent of a 16-year-old. Uh, I have a 16-year-old who already hated school before the closure and was failing several classes. Now he's expected to learn remotely and self-manage, which obviously isn't working. He just doesn't care about school. Without going there to see his friends or play Ultimate Frisbee, he doesn't see a point. How can I motivate him when there's not a lot of currency to use? Well, this is um, uh, also something that I'm hearing. If, if your child didn't like school before um, and merely went to school to see their friends and play ultimate and, pl and just pass their classes enough so that they can be part of the school community, it's going to be super difficult right now to get them to do anything either at that level or, or even beyond uh, what the minimum is that they're expected to do. So it's very difficult, almost impossible for most kids with ADHD to learn uh, on to, to self-learn and self-teach um, as is being required by a number of middle and high schools. I think it's really critical that you make sure that your son or daughter with ADHD is getting the services that their IEP or 504 uh, demands. Um, right now, learning remotely is not something that we can expect a lot of these kids to do. And so it's worth talking to the school and asking for the kind of support they need. It's not unreasonable for kids to be able to um, to need help or to be to meet in small groups um, during uh, this period. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that not caring about school um, makes sense. And so um, it's hard to get something, get yourself worked up for something that doesn't, um, it's not bringing you any joy. So try to, to talk with your son about um, what are some future things that matter to him and see if there's a way to link just getting enough done with those things that matter. So we have just a few um, minutes left, maybe two, <laughs> and um, I really would encourage you to ask a question, please, in the um, in the chat. I um, I see a few questions. Um, uh, I want to thank you for uh, joining me. Actually, people have said they've. Um, Here's one question, and I'll take this one right now. Uh, my children both have ADHD. They're having difficulty with online learning and ancillary services. It's stressful for all of us. I just do what we can. I don't want a house full of tension. How can I explain to the schools that we can't do 
the three hours a day. I really agree with you. You don't want a house full of tension. And I think it's reasonable for you to negotiate this with the school, the guidance counselor, um, the adjustment counselor, anybody who um, is in charge of supporting learning for alternative learners. You need to get in touch with them and say, listen, this is what we can do right now. And to, to set up a new normal for your child as a learner. So this will be available for you to watch again. Thank you so much uh, for joining. I will be able to write responses after um, this session to your comments, so please keep on asking. Uh, it's been a great pleasure for me to be here, and I'll be back next week, um, and I will see you then. Again, thank you for participating in the first of our new Attitude Series Facebook Live, event, uh, Facebook Live advice sessions. Uh, have a good day and please continue with your questions. I'll respond to them in writing once I go off live.